What is happening, everybody? Bones98, or Sid, whatever you like to call me, or Shithead. Back again with our playthrough of Lords of the Fallen. So, last video you saw me get my ass kicked over in the catacombs, uh, or you could call it the prison, and I realized that it's just an area that I'm not supposed to be at at the moment. I have to wait until I upgrade my character for me to be able to complete the area. I guess there is a way to complete the area, but it's really tough because they're enemies that heal themselves and having a character that can't deal enough damage in order to compensate for that uh, will be a big pain in the ass. So anyway, also another thing, we experienced some technical difficulties with the game as I was trying to record and what ended up happening was I was recording a bunch of footage and all you could hear was the audio. You can hear my commentary you can hear the games audio but you just couldn't see anything so I decided I'm gonna go with my second save of this game which is actually a second character that I made and I mentioned in I believe it was in the second video so I'm gonna go ahead and start off where we left off we're gonna skip the prison and the catacombs and we're gonna continue on right after fighting the commander I uh, did a little bit of leveling up, kind of grinded a little bit, just so that I could use this greatsword called Persistence, and also went back to the beginning of the game and found there's a secret area called the Void, and the Void is actually like stand aside. I'm looking for a man almost like a named Kaslo. second, Wait. like a second challenge, I know a challenge you. room. You're supposed to be in prison. Your and are well you can find known. some really cool items if you complete those challenges. And I'll kind of show you what I got to, but one second. Let me go through a dialogue here just in case you happen to miss it in the previous videos. It's been a long time, Captain. You're an animal. You belong in a cage. What business have you here amongst men of honor? Caslow was a fool to let you out. I'm here to do my job. Wrong. My soldiers are here to do their jobs. You're here for yourself. For profit, I'll wager. You're only here because there's something in it for you. Believe what you want. What's your back, Harkin? I have business in the Citadel. Maybe Caslow was roughed up enough times to trust you. But one look at you reminds me of what you are. I'm not letting you in. He's looking for the Rogar's incursion point into the old monastery. Go to the graveyard. You have enemies here, and they're not all Rogar. Now move, and steer well clear of me and my men. Damn, what a shithead, man. If it wasn't for Harkin, your bitch-ass soldier would have probably been dead. Okay, so now let's show you some of the weapons that I got when I went into the void. Or whatever the hell that thing was. It was like a porter, uh, portal, right? I got the spike... That I picked up somewhere else. Uh, the Last Resort. Pretty cool daggers. I totally forgot which ones I got. I'm thinking it's this Marger and Prejudice. This is a wicked staff. And supposedly that this weapon works against kind of like... How would I say this? The effectiveness of this weapon actually decreases significantly if you're like a magic or cleric character. And then also I have the arrowhead, which are these really cool gauntlets, like these dagger gauntlets, so you can punch the shit out of characters. But I'm gonna go back to Persistence, and this is the weapon that you get after fighting the first warden. And I also got the Bull Rock, Bull Wark shield, or whatever it's called. Uh, I believe this was the, the shield that the first warden had. Not sure, but check it out. Pretty cool, and actually provides a decent amount of poise. It's at 12 points compared to the standard heavy shield, which only provides 8. And. There are a little bit of sacrifices if you're using the Bulwark Shield, and one of them would have to be the fact that the weight on this thing is almost 
a little over three times as much as the kite shield, the heavy shield. But it does provide a really good amount of damage, and as a matter of fact, it takes away less energy or stamina when you're blocking attacks. And then we also got some boots like the Hot Blood, Cleric, Rogue. What else do we have here? Hot Blood. Hot Blood. So this is like a... Uh, how would I say this? Like a thief character's type of uh, armor set. Then we have live elements. We got the cleric. Some people will say that they actually like this one, but I actually love the live elements one. Very, very intimidating. And then we have this ring, and it's called Faithful Disciple. And I don't know what it does. It says it is used. It used to be common within the ancient group of Northern Friars. It is believed the amulet regenerated their spellcrafting powers. So I believe this is actually a ring that will allow us to um, regenerate mana or magic power. So that way there would be less time in between having to cast spells and use the gauntlet. And I also learned some other things that I recorded in the other videos where I was having technical difficulties and I found out where I could find the symbols. Like you see that ruin symbol right there? So I know where the rest of them are. So there, after you activate that one, you just go over here. activate this one right here and make sure that you're wearing this ring the guide of Antanas if not I heard that you know the game will bug out and all that stuff to be honest with you uh, with the four or five hours so far in this game I can say that this game has uh, quite a bit of bugs is it a bad game no I actually enjoy it they're not game-breaking bugs but sometimes it does upset me when this game would just start pooping out, will crash when I'm in the middle of recording a Let's Play. And the reason for that is because the video editing software that I use in order to compile two parts together. Say for example, if this playthrough video were to crash right now, the game would crash during this playthrough video. I would have to merge it with another video continuing off where the game crashed. And for me to do that, I end up sacrificing video quality and, you know, visual quality of the game. And for those of you who know anything about Lords of the Fallen, I mean, the graphics are a main point of the game. Uh, that's, it's one of the biggest selling points of the game. I mean, aside from the combat system and everything, the, the biggest selling points for me were the visuals, right? And the combat. I mean, I love the Dark Souls style combat. So I figured that, you know, this is a game I want to try. This is a game I want to play. This is a game that I want to finish. The story is not that interesting so far. I mean, I haven't really uncovered much of what the hell is going on in this world. So we'll probably be able to find out later on in the game. Uh, but... The combat is addictive, and I'm always curious to find out what type of enemies I'll encounter later on. And I think the that's the greatest hook. By Antanas. Did you find them? I found all of them. Let me show you. There were other refuge rooms. I don't think that anyone made it there. I pray for their souls, but they won't need their worldly goods anymore. This item will lead you there. Goodbye. May the judges save me from the demons. So now, now that you've completed that side quest, you get this little trinket right here. And this is the compass. And the item description says, Don't believe people who claim that your mind deceives you. Trust your senses, as what you hear and feel will lead you towards treasure of great value. Now, I don't really know what this trinket does. Supposedly it helps you find rare items and this and that. But so far, it 
I've been exploring the world with this trinket and haven't been able to find any secret items or anything. Now there could be two reasons why. Either I can't hear what the hell is going on in this game. I mean, the volume is actually pretty loud. My audio settings, everything, music, sound effects, everything is all the way to the max. But here's the thing. Uh, I am using a PlayStation 3 controller that doesn't have vibration on it. So I think that what happens is if you nearby an item while having this trinket on, your controller will vibrate. I can't confirm right now, I'm just using a regular PS3 controller, not the DualShock one, so I can't confirm. Anyway, let's get back to this. Now, what lies ahead is really interesting. A really, really cool boss fight. Uh, don't want to spoil it for you. And also, just to let you know, there are tougher enemies ahead. There's even some secret areas in the game. Now, remember the void that I was talking about? Well, here it is. This is the void. So what happens is, if you destroy the boss or the lord of that area, you gain access to this portal. And this portal will take you to certain places. Sometimes these portals will just put you in a dark room full of treasure chests, or sometimes they'll put you in a dark room full of enemies that you have to kill before you can get whatever rare you item reach the you want, on the other side or whatever's the there. It's suicide, but I have no other choice. This is our only hope for help. There is wow. still a place okay, help this Persistence Greatsword is a beast. And it's really cool how, like, with the particle effects and everything, and the fire, oh my god, that's so awesome. I was hoping, oh man, and I hate to mention this game again, but I was hoping in Dark Souls, whenever you ascended a weapon with fire, you would see the fire, you know, rather than using the gold pine resin or, you know, dark resin and all that type of stuff. You know, I was really hoping that as soon as you ascended the weapon with fire damage, you kind of get to see the flames come out of the sword. Unfortunately, they didn't do that. It would have been really neat if they did. But luckily here, we actually have some really cool weapons that have fire. And you can also ascend weapons in this game as well. As a matter of fact, um, later on you encounter a blacksmith, which you will later on see in this video. I'm going to continue off here. And you'll be able to use different magic ruins and basically improve the weapons that you have. You know, you can add in magic. Getting out of hand. Uh, the you know, what is uh, in front of the monastery and Magic sanctuary. damage you can add. We can't let any more in. Fire we'll damage. Antanas ordered us to close the gate. You know, uh, I understand his reasons, but these are people. He's supposed to be uh, add. I think it's also poison damage, so you can add poison to your weapon. Pretty cool idea. I mean, pretty pretty cool, you know, feature to this game. Now you gotta be careful with these guys. What they do is they do a three three swing strike. So they'll go one, two, charge the attack, and then three, and that's when they're left vulnerable. And that also leaves them vulnerable right there, too. Now, with this weapon, you want to make sure that you two-hand. If you don't, your swings will be too slow. Or you can keep your shield up and sort of flank the enemy and make sure that he's vulnerable, come behind him, and then use a the backstab. Or you can parry them. Well, the problem with this game is that parrying is not so... Easy as Dark Souls, you know, uh, parries are actually a big pain in the butt in this game because the character takes a long time to sort of parry attacks with his shield. Now up ahead right here is where you will encounter the boss. Now you want to be careful because that guy is really powerful. Okay. Alright, 
And then... We need something to ignite the beacon. Okay. Well, there was something in the prison that I picked up, I think, that allows me to ignite this. And I have ignited this uh, part, but I don't know what it does. There should be a chest around here. Let's see. There's a chest around here. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Lock on that on <laughs> on this guy. Boom. Absolutely insane. So fucking cool. This is my fourth night on watch. The first three have been quiet, except for the rumors I don't know what that the spread hell that was about. Rumors about the Rogar. They are nowhere to be seen. But there's a glow on the horizon. The villages are burning, and the fire may creep closer. I don't think it will be quiet much longer. And now we have four potions. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You gotta watch out for this guy. This guy is, ooh, he is tough. He is a tough son of a bitch. See, I mean, he just, he takes a shit ton of damage. Actually, inflicts a ton of damage, too. What really sucks about fighting this guy is he doesn't really leave himself vulnerable. He's kind of like the guy from uh, shit, man. Here we go again. From Dark Souls 2, when you're over at the uh, Dragon's Palace. You know, the one that's got the mace, the giant with the mace. I mean, seriously, come on. God damn. Oh my god.
Let's increase our vitality here. Okay, fuck this guy. Let's get out of here. Oh shit, get the fuck out of the way. Oh, oy. Just gotta run away from that guy, cause he's very mean. He's a very mean person. He's an asshole. Okay. Now coming over here, we actually have a secret area right before the boss. We go here. And boom. You get the guard's great sword, magic resistance shard, and an empty bottle for your potions. And with that, if you got everything you need, Graves you'll probably need get about to be tended five and heals. Never forgotten. Gladly will I care for the dead until the day I join them. Should I ever feel insecure? I know that I can retreat into one of the graveyard's sacred shrines. They will shield me off from evil, for they were built at the time when Keystone was erected. To repel creatures from other worlds, lest they want to come close to our buried heroes. Oh, shit. So I can immediately change weapons. That way, if you have a weapon that swings a bit too slow... You know, so if you're using persistence and it's too slow for you, well, there you are. And by the way, don't worry about the warning about Caslow's health being low and this and that. Uh, he's okay. Now check this out. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> now whenever he does that there's another attack he does where he slams his axe on the ground see he does that and then boom one two three and then he pretty much leaves himself vulnerable but you got to make sure that you don't stick around him for too long or else he will basically incapacitate you and he will punish you. Now what you can do is you can keep your distance and use projectiles and sort of eat away a little bit of his health. So two and then three. And then he'll throw grenades. So you gotta watch out for those grenades, but they'll also be useful for you later on in the game. And what I mean by that is he'll start spawning different enemies to come help him with the fight. See, so just, you know, inflict only two swings and then just move out of the way. Don't get too greedy with them because you will be punished. He will basically incapacitate you and then 
wail, just wail on you. Just start swinging out on you. Okay, now this you got to be careful with. What he does is he covers this area with a blue flame. What you can do is you can hide around here, and this will kind of give you shelter. Now, if you stay around on top of those blue flames, you will die. And now here's him summoning these enemies. Just go in, kick it, and they won't spawn. But make sure that you get you get to them. Eesh. Now also, if you get him to destroy these pillars, he will basically be incapacitated for a little while, and then... You can just go wail on him. But you gotta be careful and make sure that you get his little minions before they get you. on over here and see I told you the grenades will actually help you get rid of those guys one, two, and three. All right, and it's all sometimes just being at the right place at the right time. Okay, now he's covered this place in blue. Just haul ass over here. Or else, that's what happens. <laughs> oh man, I got my ass kicked. Well, alright guys, I'm going to end it here for you. And we'll continue off with our next part. And we'll definitely kick that guy's ass. Have a good one.